look how big this thing is. Look how big compared to you. Yeah, I got fit in here. So in this video, me and my partner Julian are going to be making Cora, my Brazilian rainbow boa, a new bioactive enclosure. Brazilian rainbow boas can get up to six feet long and they can get pretty big. We made her an enclosure out of OSB wood and it's eight feet long, three feet tall, and two feet wide, which is pretty big. Right now, she's definitely not full grown. She still has about maybe two years to become full grown. It's never a problem giving your animal a bigger enclosure than they need as long as you fill it out nicely so they feel safe. I'm filming this intro a little bit later after it's been done obviously because it's right behind me. She's explored the whole thing already and she completely loves it. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and I'll let you get on to it. <laughs> First, I start off by taking all the plants I plan to put in her enclosure and removing all the soil from the roots and then rinsing the roots to make sure I get most of it and also rinsing the leaves to make sure that there is no pesticides or chemicals that may harm Cora or any of the isopods or springtails or any of the microfauna in the vivarium. Okay, this is good for now, and I'm gonna take it to the sink and wash the rest off, but first I'm just gonna, oh, do another plant. I bought some full spectrum LED lights off of Amazon, and we just screwed them into the top of the enclosure. We measured the sides of the enclosure so we could cut the background which is cocoa fiber but in the form of a mat which I also got in bulk on Amazon and we just nailed it into the enclosure but I don't recommend doing it that way because it ended up not staying as well as I would have liked. Then we washed the LECA and put it on the bottom of the enclosure as a drainage layer. Then we cut the mesh to size and I had multiple pieces and weird cutouts that I made to fit the bottom of the enclosure. Then I mixed up some wood chips and cocoa core. and I'm dumping it into the enclosure. It took quite a lot of bricks. I think it was like five co cocoa core bricks and a really, really big bag of wood chips. I'm taking the substrate from her old bioactive enclosure and putting it in her new one and mixing it with the new substrate. This is a good way to get the bioactive enclosure started. I call this seeding the enclosure because I'm taking all the beneficial bacteria that I grew in the old enclosure and putting it in this one to help kickstart the process. I'm choosing the placement for all the sticks that I collected. I collected all these sticks from a place in nature that I knew there was no pesticides or chemicals and I cleaned them in my bathtub. <laughs> And this is steel. <laughs> Now's the fun part. Now is when I'm putting all the plants in their placement and planting them in the substrate. And this is definitely the fun part. I love decorating enclosures with plants, especially live plants. It really brings them to life to another level that you can't reach without them.
Here I'm planting uh, this plant into one of the branches inside of the enclosure that has like a really perfect like crevice for it. So I just put a little bit of substrate in there, I shoved the roots in there, I put more substrate on top, and then I ended up putting moss on top to cover it. Here I took a pothos cutting that I had rooted and I wrapped sphagnum moss around the roots. Then I used more clear string to attach the plant to the branches to make the branches look like they have life growing out of them. Okay, now is moss time. I collected all this moss from a place, the same place I got the branches where I knew there was no chemicals or pesticides and I tried to take responsibly. I didn't take more than the nature could handle. And here I am just adding it to the branches uh, to give more life to them and bring more green to the top of the enclosure. Um, and I'm using the same clear string. I'm adding leaf litter to the bottom of the enclosure. This is good for all the microfauna because they will eat it and break it down. And it also gives them a place to hide under to make them feel safe. And it's also good for Cora as enrichment because of the different textures on the surface. I am moistening the sphagnum moss before I put it in. And then I just add the sphagnum moss all around the surface of the enclosure. This helps aid in humidity and it also just looks nice. And then again, it's good for enrichment for Cora with different textures. Here is some soft decomposing wood that I'm putting in here for the isopods and springtails and worms so they can break it down and aid in food source for them. These are the isopods I chose. They're Cuberus marina normal and Cuberus marina papayas. And then I added springtails and then I added worms as my microfauna. Now is the time to finally add Cora into the enclosure. And I took her out of her old enclosure that she was only in for a little while and then I introduced her to the new enclosure. She was a bit wary at first. Also, you can see she's in shed. And then I brought her over to the hide that I had in her previous enclosure because I thought she would feel safer going there. And she did because she actually went in because at first she was a bit wary and didn't want to move. So then she went in her hide and then immediately started burrowing into the substrate, which she loves to do. And yeah, since then she's been loving it. She got used to it very quickly and she loves it. And over time, a few mushrooms have come up and shown themselves, which makes me so, so happy because I love, love, love mushroom and mycelium and fungi and all that they are about. So it just makes me really happy to see them. And these are some pictures I took of them and I thought you guys would enjoy seeing them because they're absolutely beautiful. And this is the finished product.